Hello and welcome to another review of a film that I've seen on Mubi. This time I'm reviewing The African Desperate, directed by Martine Sims. So let me start by saying that this film did not work for me at all. It's really tedious, it's 100 minutes long, and the movie description says that it's riotously hilarious. Unfortunately, I just didn't find it amusing at all. Now Martine is an established artist and some of her gallery work does look quite interesting. So I really want to make sure that I give this film every chance if I'm going to critique it. So the first question I can ask myself is, is this film made for me? And I'm not sure that it is. It's full of drug taking. It's got a real kind of internet and social media aesthetic. And when I reviewed a little while back The Demons of Dorothy directed by Alexis Langlois, I raised the question of films not necessarily being for everyone, that a film is perhaps made for a certain viewer. So I do think that perhaps this film is aimed at a young audience engaged with drug culture, and that just isn't me. Now the film is set in an art school, and given that it's only 10 years since I was at art school, I potentially fall into the camp of an intended viewer for this film. But it's got a feel of a much more American high school movie rather than being about art school per se. In the end, I really don't like what this film is about. It's a full-on portrayal of gratuitous drug-taking and hallucinatory experiences. And this really feels like the central purpose, the most important thing in the film. The script does contain art and literary references, but they feel very shallow. There's no depth. It's The film really feels all surface and style. And the film is really mocking art tutors and art speak but then the film at times itself falls into the pretensions of the art world that the film wants to critique. There are actually two other of her films on Mubi at the moment and they're both less than 10 minutes so I decided to watch them both just to try and understand her work a little bit better. One of the films is called Soliloquy and the other one is called She Mad Bitch Zone. These three films do have certain common features. They're all based on a kind of internet social media aesthetic and I really find it difficult to articulate the style of these films. There is an originality to the to the style even though I'm not that keen on it and I, I just wrote down these words, jerky, flashes, interruptions, disturbance, interference and layering. So that's that's what I'm thinking of in terms of the images and the and the sounds when I'm watching her work. I think one of the things I really didn't enjoy about The African Desperate was the length. These other films both being less than 10 minutes. I did feel that these were superior pieces. Both of these shorter films had a energy to them which was consistent and maintained throughout the film. The African Desperate does have the same energy in it, but it, it because of the length of the film at 100 minutes, it just doesn't have any consistency. So can I say anything positive about this film? Well, I think technically there are some interesting things here. As I say, I think the film is creative and original. I've never seen anything like this before. There are kind of dreamy shots of being high and these feel creative with interesting use of light and colour effects and I think this is what she's good at. I looked up one of her works which um, displayed at MoMA, it was an installation containing film and images and it actually had uh, an app that you downloaded before you went into the exhibition and you would hold the app up in front of the images and it would layer other images on top of the image that you were looking at. And I think this is this kind of innovation is perhaps what she's good at. And actually one of the shorter films that I watched, Soliloquy, is made with a digital avatar. And again, this feels like there there is something innovative going on here. So the African Desperate does feel like someone experimenting in making films, trying to do something new. As I say, I've never quite seen anything like this before but it does have the feel of a student project and I hate saying that about this film because I do think looking at her other work 
Martine is a serious artist and filmmaker. The other positive thing I can say about this film is that the main actress, Diamond Stingley, is excellent. She's really likeable. She's got a real character and I'd like to see her in other films. So overall, although I would definitely recommend seeking out her artwork in a gallery, I can't recommend this film. Maybe art students that are more engaged than me with drug culture will get a lot from this film, but it definitely isn't for me. Next, I'm reviewing the film Free Chol Su Lee, directed by Julie Hart and Eugene Yi. See you next time.